Welcome to J-Hart Muddleworks and part one of my two-part video series, Building Better Brakes for the Italeri Porsche 928 S4. I wanted to do the rotors and calipers in one video, but as it was, I had two and a half hours of footage just building the rotors. Uh, it seems like everything takes longer when you're recording things for YouTube, so the caliper portion of the brake rebuild will come out next week. This is going to be a longer video, guys, so welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. All right, guys and gals, before we begin working away at these brakes, I'm going to start by taking a look at where we're beginning at. These are the discs and calipers. There is some detail on the calipers. All in all, these are not bad, but I think we can do better. So we are going to remove these calipers. I'm going to be using some resin ones. We also have these seams in here. These are not ridges. These are just where the plastic met together, coming from two different directions, and it formed a seam, so that's not a big problem. What is a big problem, there are three ejector pin marks on each one of these. And if you look, there's a notch at the top inside this ring. There's a notch that matches on all the suspension pieces. In theory, the calipers should go to the inside. So on the front, they're gonna be on the back of the brake and on the back, they're gonna be on the front of the brakes. All four of these are exactly the same, which means that on one side, it's gonna look like this on the other side, it's going to look like this. So you can't just flip them and hide the ejector pin marks to the inside or the outside. If you were using uh, the original kit wheels, you're not going to really see the brakes, but we're not. We're using some wheels that are very open, so these should be very visible. So I'm going to want to get rid of those ejector pin marks. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the original calipers. One thing we absolutely do not wanna to touch is this center ring. The center ring is used for spacing. Uh, the center for the wheel will actually press against that and that's gonna keep your, the end of your wheel from sticking out too far or going too far in. So we wanna leave that center ring alone and be very careful not to damage that. I'm going to start with a flat metal file. Could use a thinny stick and probably get away with it. However, uh, as you use some sanders, that sanding material comes off. And I've got four of these to do, so that's going to be a lot of sanding. And you don't really have to worry about that with a metal file. You can just wipe it off and go back to wearing away your work. I want to keep it flat and take my time. I want to make sure that I keep this surface parallel to the rotor surface. If I don't angle it in some way, I'm going to warp and mess up my surface. It won't be flat when I'm done with it, but I'm going to keep my thumb over that center ring so that I don't damage it. It feels like I start getting close. I like to get a brush out, brush out any plastic. Now I have a nice smooth surface. I don't have any raised edges. I run my fingernail across it. It's nice and smooth. It doesn't hang up. 
Well, it's almost nice and smooth. I will go ahead and take a 400 grit thinning stick and finish that off. It's gonna remove a lot less material. That 400 grit's just a little finer, a little more delicate. I'm gonna repeat for the other side. All right, so we are done with taking the caliper decal off the sides. Now we need to clean up this outer area. Now I have a set of endless rotors from Hobby Design. Um, I didn't really care for the carving pattern on these. This came with two different sets of venting, and I like the other ones. They're just the standard curves. They didn't have these cross hatches on here. So I used those on a previous build. We're going to use these on this build. These happen to be the perfect fit for our brakes. But we're not going to use this side because I still don't like that crosshatch pattern. What we are going to do, we're going to take a sharpie marker and we're going to color all the way around the discs. And that's going to tell us what we need to remove. And we're going to do that for both sides. For this, I am going to start with my 120 grit thinning stick. I want to sand as perpendicular as I can. That's looking good, so we're going to go ahead and take our 240 grit sander. We're going to take our 400 grit. And we're going to go ahead and clean up all these edges. I want to make sure we get the Screw points real good. So now we have a nice round disc. And our rotor sits on that perfectly. Nice and flush. So now we're going to take we're going to go around the side. We're just going to go all the way around it. I'm not going to touch that center piece. We're going to keep holding that with our thumb. And we're going to take off all of these ejector pin marks. We're going to smooth this out. There is some raised area in here where they have the markings in there they make it look like the rotors have been rubbed but we're going to go ahead and take that off too we want to try to end up with a fairly smooth surface so that our photo etch will lay down nice and smooth There we have it, nice and smooth. Now we are going to be painting these. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this surface off with an 800. Just make sure I have a nice smooth surface. So there we have it. Both of our surfaces have been sanded. Nice and smooth, no ejector marks. No more raised surfaces, just a nice smooth disc. And we still have our centers untouched. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and give this a quick clean and a dry. Just make sure there's no sanding dust on it. Then we're going to primer it and paint these the gunmetal gray. So here we are in the spray booth. I think this may be my first time spraying on camera. Uh, we're going to start with some UMP Gloss Black Primer. We have the compressor set to 25 PSI and we're going to give the rotors two nice light even coats of primer. 
Uh, UMP primer is rebranded Steinal Res by Badger. This is a great acrylic primer. It's self-leveling and it gives a great results. Uh, it's very hard to mess up. And we're back. We've let that dry for about five minutes or so. Everything's nice and dry. We're gonna go ahead and apply our second coat. Again, just nice, light, even coat of this gloss black primer. We're gonna let that dry for a bit and we'll move on to our paint. So we've let that dry for about 10 to 15 minutes. Everything's nice and dry. Uh, meanwhile, we've cleaned out our airbrush. We've lowered our air pressure down to about 18 PSI. I found that lacquers like to be sprayed somewhere between about 15 and 20. You know, 18 is a real nice area, in my opinion, to spray at. And we're gonna go ahead and start applying our paint. We're going to be applying some of this Tamiya LP20 light gunmetal gray. I would go with LP19, which is just regular gunmetal, but I didn't realize I was out. Um, these aren't available in the US, so I order from Sunward Hobbies in Canada and have them shipped. Uh, you have to order a minimum, I think it's something like $15 or so. So I'll have to wait until I need more paints in order to order more. I can't just buy a single paint. Now I'm going to give this a quick stir with my Badger paint mixer. Some guys don't really like this mixer. They feel that it gets paint everywhere. But I find if you just put your finger on it a little bit, you can really slow it down and really get it control over it and it doesn't sling paint nearly as bad. Now we're going to go ahead and give this a nice light coat, real gentle. Uh, you don't need a lot, just be patient with it, give it a real light, fine, smooth, even coat, and we'll come back in about five minutes or so and hit it with the second one. And here we are with our second coat. These Tamiya LP paints really do give a gorgeous metallic finish. To hold this, I took a toothpick and I just wrapped just enough uh, masking tape around it so that I could fit it snugly into the center of the part. And with that finished, we're going to let this dry and make our way back to the bench. All right guys, real quick, I did make a change. I went from the LP20, the light gun metal, to this LP61 metallic gray. is a little less bright it still has that metallic sheen to it but the metallic gray gives us just a little more contrast because it's just a little darker and it's a little flatter and we're gonna move on to our next step so we are gonna use these but we're not gonna use this side because I don't like this pattern we're going to use this flat side on the back. Now there's going to be some problems with that for starters. There's still a lot of film and nastiness in place from the adhesive. These are not the kind that have the frets that you have to cut off. These are fully etched away from this metal fret, but they are held in place with some adhesive, like a thin clear adhesive. First thing we want to do is clean these up. I'm going to use some UMP airbrush cleaner. You could use isopropyl alcohol, probably even use some soap and some hot water. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to etch a pattern in here for where these calipers have been pressing and the pads have been pressing against these rotors. 
So to do that, I'm going to take my Dremel, I'm going to start with this grinding wheel. Now you can use a cutting wheel for this too, and it'll work with no problem. However, I found that some of the cutting wheels, if you put too much pressure on them, they can break. This nice thick grinding wheel is not going to break. Not from the kind of pressure that I'm going to put on it. Three M double-sided tape. Don't use this for a lot of stuff, but there are a couple of times when it comes in really handy. It doesn't have a whole lot of adhesive, but it's got just about enough for what we want to do here. I do love this Dremel tool. I did not realize how useful the rotary tool was going to be until I really started using one. I want this as centered as I can get it before I press it down because the more centered it is, the more even your scratches are going to be. So, we have our rotary tool and we have a flat file. Kind of see in there we've got some grinding and some pattern in there so that looks a lot more worn. So when we put that on it'll look something like that. Now we're not going to glue these in just yet though. So I have four of these and I have four rotors to build, but I want to build the front and the back. So I'm going to use this as a template. My favorite source of cheap metal for scratch building is soda can. Cut off the top, cut off the bottom, wash it nice and clean. Flatten it out as best as you can. And you have some cheap metal for scratch building. It's super thin, it's easy to cut through, it's easy to work with. It's not going to be structurally very sound. But that's okay because we're going to have the plastic rotor to go behind it. All right, so here's what we want to do. We want to find an area that's as flat as we can get it. Preferably some area that doesn't have these huge dents and creases. And somewhere where we can get our entire photo etch part in as flat an area as possible. I'm going to use our Sharpie marker. And we're going to just use the photo etch part as a pattern and draw a ring around the outside edge. My photo etch ring is about 14 millimeters. So I'm going to put a dot at 7 millimeters. So that's going to be, give me a dot in about the center. I want it to be as centered as I can get it. 
doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I want it to be close. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen vise and I have a bit in here that is just large enough for the screw on my Dremel bit. just fit in there because that's going to hold it in place. Now I'm going to cut this out. I just start out cutting it a bit wide just to get it off of the main piece of aluminum. Make it easier to work with. Now there's two ways we can go from here. You can either trim this down now or you can go ahead and mount it onto your, I'm using a sanding wheel as my backing. So you can mount it on your backing surface, do your cleanup, and then remark everything and cut it off later. If you do go ahead and leave it long, you wanna make sure that it doesn't extend past your, your backing surface. When you're sanding this, you're going to want to take your sandpaper and press down from the top. You never want to really go at it from the side. But if something happens, you know, dog barks and scares you or tries to jump in your lap or something, and you do accidentally hit this with your hand or something, um, if you leave this long and you leave it long enough that it extends past your backing surface, what you have is basically a 5,000 to 25,000 RPM saw blade. If it's smaller and you hit this, you're just going to hit the grinding wheel. It might scuff up your finger, be a little sore. But again, I want to make sure that it doesn't extend past my backing surface. And one of the reasons why I do leave it a little bit long is that it does allow me to kind of help center things a little better. And if something happens and I do end up somehow damaging an edge, I've got a little extra room before it gets into the surface. Now I'm going to put this paint side up. And the reason why I'm going to put this paint side up is aluminum cans have a, it's kind of like a plastic lining, it's like a, or a chemical coating on them and that's to keep the the drink away from the metal otherwise your soda when you want to drink it would taste like aluminum can so they put this coating on there to protect your drink but that coating makes the aluminum real dull there is no coating on the outside so when you go and sand this you're going to have nice bright shiny metal Again, we're going to go from the top down. We're not going to try and go at it from the side or anything. You want to try and get as, as top as possible, and you want to be careful while you're doing this. out if you want to stop and check your work and when it's nice and clean like that you could call this done if you want but I'm going to take my metal file I'm just going to use like the edge to put in some additional scratches in there So now you can see that we've got that kind of scratched up surface that really looks the part of having those pads grabbing onto that rotor. So that's our backing. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Here's our 
Put the next part back down on there. I should have drawn both circles when I had it on there the first time, but I didn't. So I'm just going to go back in there now. So that's the area we want to keep. One of the nice things about working with aluminum like this uh, from a soda can is it's really thin. So you can use a nice sharp pair of small scissors like this. So that's close enough for government work. We'll go back in with a grinding bit on the Dremel and we'll clean up the outer the edges on this in a minute. And you use the hole we drilled as a starting point for your cuts. And these don't have to be perfect, and you're not going to try and get as, as you did on the outside. I would say leave some extra space in there, but you want to cut some of this out. Once you have them set off like this, then we're going to move on to a grinding wheel on the drum. For starters, I'm going to clean up this outside edge. We just want to get it nice and smooth, make sure we don't ha have any like pointed edges, like triangles, or any flats. Like that right there. We want to clean that up. You want to make sure you're holding this really tight so it doesn't move on you. You don't want it to move, you don't want it to jerk loose and fly across the house. So once your outside's good, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start working on that inside. This is not the best bit for this, this bit's a little bit too large. So you really want to take your time with that. Don't try and rush it. If the part starts getting hot, set it down, let it cool off for a little bit. But what we're going to end up with is a nice disc. It should be roughly around the same size as our photo etch part. Now we're going to get these glued on to the kit part. Just use a little bit of CA glue. this over so the caliper is going to go here flip this over on this side the caliper is going to go over here so I'm going to look for a defect if I have any I'm going to put it on that side and right there I got just a, little, a dent in the surface so that's what I'm going to I'm going to hide There is some overhang 
on that back side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully just take my rotary tool and I'm gonna grind that back so it's nice and smooth. Here is the finished product. In my opinion, this is much more realistic and it's a great improvement over the kit part. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I don't do a lot of video building, so I'm trying to get more practice and thought this would be a fun mini build. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, and as always, I welcome your comments, feedback, tips, and suggestions in this comment section below. If you aren't already a subscriber to the channel, why not consider clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified when part two comes out. As always, guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching, stay safe, keep modeling, and have a great day.